Super Mario Brothers has just turned 30 this month. If you were to ask season critics about the most influential titles in video game history, you probably wouldn't get a single list without this game. For an entire generation, this was a game that signaled, yes, video games are something special. They're here to stay this time, and they will continue to become ever more fun and interesting. It was like a revelation that still resonates with players today, as the excited reception for Super Mario Maker demonstrates. But it wasn't created in a vacuum. At the time of its publication, platforming games had long been one of the most established and highly populated genres. As so often in history, the achievement of Super Mario Bros. wasn't doing everything completely different, but the ingenious way in which it combined its predecessor's strength while avoiding many of the weaknesses and pitfalls. Before Mario became super and changed everything, Many others had come and gone, many evolutionary variants had been mapped out, and many of the game's elements had already been explored in isolation. This is a look back at this ancient prehistory of the genre. Frogs, 1978. Frogs is so simplistic it hardly even registers as a platform game. But there's a platform and there's jumping. So here it is, the great grandfather of all platform games. As the title suggests, you play as a frog, who hops along a set of lily leaves and can leap high into the air to catch insects. When the amphibian gets too far to the left or right, it falls down into the pond, but that only costs it a few seconds of the strict time limit. If you manage to catch a dragonfly, you get a free game. And that's all about the to frogs. What's interesting about the game's graphics is the fact that only the frog, its prey and the time and score counters are rendered by the program. The entire environment was mounted to the screen as cutouts and overlays, for an effect that can be recreated by emulators only rudimentarily. Frog's publisher Gremlin Industries merged with the North American arm of Sega soon after. So the first platform game ever is technically a Sega property now. Sega never did anything with it though, and there weren't any official home ports either. But in 1982 Mattel came up with a variant for the Intellivision console called Frogbog, which simulates a day and night cycle as two players compete for insects. And in Japan, Tokihiro Naito of Highlight fame earned his first programming laurels with a magazine source called Printout for a PC-801 adaption named Frog the Lively in May 1983, demonstrating that the original was also known in Mario's homeland. Oddly, falling into the pond cost the frog a life in this version. Space Panic, December 20th, 1980 Most people nowadays probably wouldn't categorize Space Panic as a platforming game. There's no jumping at all, as you can only move vertically by climbing ladders. And yet, it's an important part of platforming history. Platform games weren't always called that, but belonged to a genre called climbing games in the early 1980s. And that started with Space Panic. Looking at the game, it's easy to imagine how it could have inspired Donkey Kong. But it plays out very differently. The protagonist is chased by aliens and has to dig holes in the ground in order to trap them. Space Panic undoubtedly borrows from the top-down maze action game Hey Young Q Alien, which debuted in Japanese arcades in January 1980. But the vertical dimension adds a new element. When you walk across trapped aliens, they drop down to the next lower level, and later stages have sturdier enemies that need to be dropped several stories at once, so you have to plan ahead and lay your traps accordingly. Jumpless climbing games remained a prolific branch for a few years, spawning titles like Woodpecker, Monster Bash, Roller Time, Super Mouse, Mr. Doe's Castle, or Tomboyish Becky's Large Adventure. The most famous representative is Broderbond's Load Runner, which even copies a trapping mechanic from Space Panic, but adds enough of its own to warrant a closer look later. Before that, Broderbond had published an even more blatant clone called Apple Panic, named after its original appearance on the Apple II, but it was ported to other computers as well. Donkey Kong, July 9th, 1981. Shigeru Miyamoto's debut combines the jumping of frogs with the climbing of Space Panic into what most consider the first true platforming game. But while it is the first game starring Mario, this is not the Mario you know. The Mushroom Kingdom is nowhere to be seen and he only has to rescue his girlfriend from an angry gorilla. The premise so obviously rips off King Kong that Universal even tried to sue Nintendo over it, until Ace Attorney John Kirby managed to prove that Universal didn't own the story to begin with. But the gameplay is also far removed from the later games. Proto Mario's jumps are still stiff and semi-realistic, a feature that later led the Ghosts and Goblins and Castlevania series to infamy for their difficulty. But Donkey Kong first cultivated this trend, which remained dominant in platforming games through the early years. 
Also typical for the era to come was the hero's extreme sensitivity to falling heights greater than his own body size. Today Donkey Kong is also famous for telling a story visually in cutscenes, but it also introduced a clear sense of spatial progression within a somewhat coherent world, as little Mario gets ever higher up the girder construction. Also new is a variety of goals. In three of the four levels the hero just has to reach the platform at the top, but for the final run in each loop he needs to remove connecting blocks from the girders to cause his foe to crash down the building, which could be described as an early boss fight. Donkey Kong soon became one of the most frequently imitated concepts in gaming, and there's little value in examining all the monkey donkeys, donkey kings, crazy kongs and whatnot, but even more emancipated clones like Beauty and the Beast for the Indian television or UPL's Mauser don't really have anything to add to the formula. Tune in next time as we enter the jungle, conquer the moon and even reach for the sun.